better word, is good. Read it right. Read works. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 56 of Let's Play Wall Street Raider. I'm Rakem, your host. Last time out, our net worth took a climb of about $2 trillion from 73.7 .7 up to almost $76 trillion. And uh, we spent most of our time last time going through our uh, industrial stocks, started here at the top, and we started downsizing for the possibility that we would see a wave of bankruptcies. That wave has yet to begin. However, it's still a possibility if our interest rate goes up. Our GDP growth is on the rise. We started last episode with a negative 3.1. It's up seven tenths of a percentage point. Hopefully that will continue because we would like to see some profits at our industrials. Um, it's been years and years since we've sold anything off and we've been downsizing the entire time this subprime mortgage crisis has been going on. It uh, really would help us out to be able to turn some of these over and make a profit because right now all of the industrial stocks are either breaking even or they're losing money. We have a couple of stocks, uh, industrial stocks that have reached their target price, but it's not because their stock values are up. It's because we've, we've uh, done extraordinary dividends that have lowered the target price. So only $2.73 here would give us a 500% return on our investment. And here only five and a, and a quarter roughly would give us a 500% return on his. We're not gonna sell these off because they're still trading at below their net value. So we're gonna wait until they peak and that's not gonna happen until this uh, subprime mortgage thing turns around. So uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna continue down our list. There's a couple of things that, and when I updated the spreadsheet, a couple of things up here that need to be addressed. We have a couple of emergencies uh, that we'll talk about. We've got a bankruptcy at the bank that has given us a 80% share of uh, this peripherals market. But um, pretty much everything else is kind of working out to, in our favor. Our commodities, um, it's time to revise again our upper and lower limits for corn and wheat. Because when I looked at this in between the episodes, corn is not really, um, is really better to, uh, to trade than wheat because the up and down uh, limits on wheat have really narrowed. It's narrowed to $5 to $6, and that's just not enough of a spread to uh, make it worth our while. We did have this at $7 for wheat, but um, it's just not getting up that high. Corn, however, does have a nice reliable spread from $4.50 to $7, but it hasn't been down to $4.50 for about three months. So, Hopefully we'll get to buy some of it today, but who knows? Never know what they're going to do. You know when, wh what their upper and lower limits are, but you just don't know what the timing is going to be. All right, so right now what we have is we have um, lots and lots of stockpiles of oil, lots and lots of stockpiles of wheat, and uh, we'd like to trade some more silver and gold, but with the prime rate not really moving at all, these prices have been kind of stagnant. All right, so I expect uh, crude to go up to 80 again, and when it does, we'll sell it all off. But uh, I don't know if it's really going to move a whole lot until this recession's over. Our index is down about a thousand points from its peak, and uh, not sure what it's going to do. It should rise, but um, it just kind of depends on the returns. And the reason why I say it depends is because a lot of our industries. Um, have been revised downwards in terms of their demand growth rate. So where these numbers were approaching or uh, were improving, they have done an about face and they've kind of worsened a little bit. Now, I don't know how to explain that exactly when our GDP growth rate is up, uh, except to say that this is a projection. It doesn't reflect what today's numbers are. So everybody is still kind of negative. I mean, we still have a handful that are positive and there's a couple that are actually good. Like uh, I think global, is it global communications? It's either global or it's a uh, network. Where is it right here? Network is actually in good shape, but he's, <laughs> he's one of very few that are the majority of these are just terrible. I mean, just awful, awful, terrible. 
And I'm kind of disappointed in the autopilot because down here, among all these that we have um, being managed by the autopilot, a bunch of them are growing positive despite having double digit negative losses or pre-tax return expectations. And yet they're not growing negative, they're growing positive. So we're gonna adjust those manually today and we may end up turning it off until you know the market turns around and these returns in here are positive because we could just set these to negative 10 and leave them there probably for a couple of years before we end up with positive returns. It's part of the reason why I have these invested in oil now is so that they can add some income um, to their earnings reports and hopefully turn their stock prices around. But uh, anyway, that is the deal. Oh, and one more thing. Um, we rolled back to version 7.83 of the game. 7.9 is in beta and I have a copy of it. But um, two episodes ago, we ran into an issue with Fortis selling off um, index futures unexpectedly. And Ronansoft has looked into it, and what they tell me is that uh, what it was doing was actually correct, that Fortis was being faced with a margin call and he had to sell off some of his index futures. And um, he had some index futures that, uh, the majority of them were negative, but he had some that actually uh, he could sell for a profit. So he sold off a few, and it didn't take very many at a profit for his margin call to come to an end. So we could today go back to using 7.9, but um, he has some other minor changes that he's gonna make and he's gonna give me a new copy in the next few days. So we're doing this one on the old 7.83 and we'll resume using uh, the 7.9 beta as soon as he gets that to us. All right, so that's what's going on and we're gonna just start working our stocks here. Um, the first emergency that we need to take care of is in the uh, computer peripherals industry. And what happened was right at the tail end of episode 55, Nomura Securities went broke and he owns stock of, uh, oh, that's the wrong one. HP printers is what we want. HP printers, here he is. He owns stock of iOmega. So we have to get rid of that as quickly as possible. And we have too big of a market share here. So I'm gonna have iOmega take some of our assets off our hands before we unload him. All right, and uh, we will still keep 19%, but we just can't control him. All right, so what we're gonna do is, uh, first of all, we're gonna have iOmega buy 10% of HPPR's assets, which is gonna be, let's give him uh, three, three billion in assets. Okay, and he'll have to borrow to do that, but we don't care. So let's have him do that. All right, now we're gonna have HP printers buy, uh, let's see, 14% from Nomura. And then we'll have Nomura sell off all of his investment in iOmega. All right, now, as far as Nomura is concerned, he has like a 0.0% market share and he just sold off iOmega for like a $90 billion loss. So we wanna have Fortis buy him and merge him in so that we can have those tax loss carryovers. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, now we're gonna liquidate Nomura. and then we'll pay down the debt. And uh, let's go see if it has a uh, deal, 80, 80 billion that it lost. So we'll get those in tax loss carryovers and that'll help shelter some of the income that we're making off of the index. Which by the way, being down it's only making 126 billion, and I think Rakem Insurance at the peak was making 380, and it should be down now, right at 300. All right, so that is done. We've siphoned off. Oh, let's see. 
Uh, let's go back to HP printers. His um, R&D needs to be raised. He's only at 10% and we got somebody spending 12 and we're reasonably competent. So we're going to raise ours up to 13. Alright, that's that done and now let's go look at the bank and see if there's any other bankruptcies that we need to take care of. Nope. And did... Okay. Just wondering if Nomura owned any other... Oh, we have to go to Fortis to look that up. See if Nomura owned any other stocks that we need to take uh, and get rid of and the answer is no. Good. All right, so uh, let's see. That's it for him too. So let's mark that done. Okay, other other items on the list. I'm looking to um, reduce the size of our footprint as in terms of the number of stocks that we have to manage. And um, I would like to sell all of these off, but they're not ready. But what we can do is we can liquidate these two banks into Bank of Rakem, and uh, that way, um, we can just move all the cash to one spot and have it all managed in one place. Now I'm going to keep these banks, I guess Aetna is not one of them, but these five to help prop up these the earnings of these lower insurance companies. But these two, we don't need to prop up the earnings for Peak and Crown, which is who owns those two. Uh, there's just no need to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Peak and Crown spin off uh, these two. If we had the bank just buy them, we would lose um, uh, any tax loss carryovers. So what we're going to do is we're going to have these, we're going to spin these two out, off to Rakem Insurance. Rakem Insurance will donate donate them to Bank of Rakem and then we'll liquidate them. All right, so let's start with Peak. And now let's go liquidate them. All right. So Bank of Rakem now is 39 trillion in equity, only 26 trillion in liabilities. Six trillion in cash, all that looks good. He's bringing in uh, 42 cents in the next quarter. So that additional two companies merged in, raised him from 0.34 to 0.42 in expected earnings. He is still predicted to lose money on the swaps because of uh, the short bond being so low, but we're overdue for a policy change. So hopefully it'll be a, um, a tightening policy and this will jump rather quickly. But until then, we kind of need to just uh, wait and see what happens. All right, so let's see. Let's mark this. Uh, that's done. These are done. We can just delete them. Any other emergencies? I think that's it as far as emergencies. Uh, all right, so let's go to Rakem Insurance. And uh, we bought a insurance company and liquidated him last time and he owned these three stocks and we're just going to go check out what they are and whether or not we should keep them, hang on to them, what. So uh, Kellogg Brown and Root here is losing money because he's spending so much on R&D. So we can give Kaiser some assets. Get him down to 40%. So let's see, we need to give him... 2% of our assets, which would be, or 2% of the market, I guess. So 2 divided by 40 would be 1 20th or 5%. Uh, 
right? So uh, let's see how much that is. That's going to be 5% of this. 170 times 5. Going to be about nine, 800 billion, roughly. So let's uh, give 800 billion of these assets over to uh, Kaiser. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to have to buy the other 5%. That's fine because he's underpriced. Okay, let's give him a billion dollars. And now we'll have him buy assets from Kellogg, Brown, and Root. All right, let's set his uh, growth rate to negative 10. And uh, we can leave his earnings as, or his R&D as zero and his dividend as zero. None of that matters right now. Okay, now let's just sell him off. We have to, of course, give 10% of him to somebody. Let's take a look at Mirage, see if we want to keep him. And considering how negative he is on his return, I'd say no. We don't need to siphon on it off any assets, so let's just get rid of him. and shipping we don't control it he's still losing money so let's sell that and then Rico he's actually making money of course he's underpriced though let's uh, let's see who owns Xerox Aetna so we can't just donate the stock to him because that is full up on stocks. So what are we going to do with him? That's the question. He doesn't have a debt problem. He's way underpriced. Oh, Xerox already owns 19%. All right, so let's just sell this off then. All right, wheat is down to almost $5, and what I want to do is I want to have Heinz and uh, Archer Daniels Midland buy as much as they can of it, at least until we can get invested in corn. So let's go to those two and buy up some wheat. I was going to buy some uh, silver, but it just shot right back up again. Okay, index still on the way down. Don't like that at all. All right, so what did we just do? Uh, we took care of all of his subsidiaries, so that's done. All right, so we just got a few small things to do for this group up here, and then we'll move on to the ones we haven't touched yet. Let's start with Red Hat. His income is up. And um, the returns here are in pretty good shape. So rather than go neg grow negative and downsize, I just want to increase our growth rate to 1%. It's not going to affect uh, anybody really. It's still the industry is still going to be improving. But um, I want to stop downsizing. I don't want to grow really. I just want to stop downsizing. And then we'll adjust our 
dividend to match whatever income we're bringing in. All right, so our expected uh, income is going to be 16 cents, and we're currently paying 20. So let's increase it to 32 cents because we don't need to stockpile cash. All right, Fortis has debt we need to pay off. Uh, looks like he already took care of it, though. Okay. Well, that's fine. Returns here are looking pretty good, too, but we can't, uh, st can't start growing, really. Um until, well, I guess we could, we could grow, we could do, we could just stop downsizing here too, if it wasn't for this negative, I guess. Let's just wait, let's wait. Let's check our dividend though, we're come bringing in 17 cents, so we can afford a 2% dividend. It's currently at 24. Wow. We gotta get this index turned around. All right, let's go to Mitsui. He's got excess cash because he's been making money on uh, physical oil. He projected to make another $3 a share in the coming quarter. Well, he's currently underwater because he has uh, oil that he's invested in. But we do have credit. Oh, we're almost out of credit too. Okay, so maybe we're gonna hold off here. Yeah, crude just dropped 10 points. But what we plan to do is we plan to uh, uh, passively invest in these other ones with A credit ratings. So any of them with A credit ratings we're gonna invest in. Uh, we'll come back to him because he's not in good shape right now. We need oil to go up, not down. I think we're going to have to give him some cash because he's uh, almost out of credit and we don't need him to sell off that oil at a bad price. So let's give him another $100 billion. And we'll just immediately pay the debt. Now he's got plenty of credit. Not sure why they didn't keep going up. I mean, it's not like we had any news. All right, let's all head over to Turner Broadcasting. He's losing money still. We're coming to the end of uh, March. So it's starting to calculate all the well, look at that. Oil's back up all of a sudden. Ooh, gold. Ooh, silver. Okay. We're going to interrupt to go buy as much gold and silver as we can. Kind of weird that everything kind of reset all at once, but I'll take it. All right, so we're going to go to everybody that needs to buy uh, gold and silver. And uh, we're going to make Lawnman Mining one of those. And uh, I will fast forward and be right back. Okay, we have bought gold and silver for everybody. We didn't get Lonman mining because he didn't have the money and Etna didn't have the money to do it for him. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Rakem Insurance give money to Etna 
Let's give him a trillion dollars for him to pass along to Lonman so he can buy gold at least. Silver has gotten too high. Corn is ready to buy. Oil is ready to sell. So we're about to fast forward again while we sell our oil, buy corn, and hopefully we can get Lonman invested in gold. So let's do a donation here. Yeah, and silver is uh, pretty much at his sale price. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sell off all of our oil first. Corn has jumped another quarter, so we're not gonna buy it just yet, but if it drops below 450, we will. So for right now, I'm just gonna fast forward while I sell off all of our oil, and I'll be right back. All right, we got all of our oil sold off. Everybody but Neck got silver. Everyone got gold, including Lonman. He didn't get silver, it's too high, but we have, he has the cash now to buy it if he wants to. So we'll wait for it to go back down and then we'll try to get it for him. For all these down here, they all borrowed money, so we're gonna go pay it back now that we've sold off their oil. Well, gold's really falling fast. But uh, none of them are ready to buy yet, so let's just uh, fix our spreadsheet. See, I think I sold off my silver too while it was high. That's everything. I think we're all updated. All right, so let's go. We uh, already looked at Mitsui, but let's just check again. Now that he has cash to invest with. Right, so basically everybody with uh, an A credit rating that's positive, and that's none of them. That's none of them. This, these are all negative again. I guess we're gonna wait a little while. So let's come back to him. Let's go to Turner. Corn is ready to buy, so let's go and buy corn. We're gonna start with Heinz and Archer Daniels. We'll have them buy corn. I'll fast forward while I do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we bought corn for everybody but Yum Brands, but it's still, it's only one penny above its uh, target price, so let's go ahead and buy it for him too. Crude went up above 70, now it's back down again. Silver has fallen from his sale price, so we'll have to hold off selling it. So let's add corn here and now let's check on the bank and see what he's doing cash-wise. 
Okay, five trillion. Let's sell off another trillion. We do not want him running out of cash and we have a whole bunch of taxes to pay now. All right, so we're just gonna wait for crude to bottom out, silver to hit its target price. And in the meantime, we're gonna look at Turner. His income here is negative. My notes are to increase the R&D and to passively invest in other companies, but they're still negative. So we're gonna wait. We can't get NBC and we already have CNN. That just leaves uh, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and they're all negative. So we're gonna wait, we'll come back to them. But we can increase the R&D. We're currently reasonably competent and spending 8%. Somebody else in here is spending 8%, so we're going to make ours 9. And we'll come back to him on the passive investment. He's got a, a little bit of excess cash, not a lot. But we can, we can definitely, since we're downsizing, put some more into uh, other stocks. So next one up is uh, Korean. And uh, my notes here are to lower the R&D because he's very capable. So we're going to make it 6%. For the rest of these, we haven't worked them. We stopped at uh, United Continental last time. So now we're just going to continue down our list. Gold or oil is still falling. Spot corn is down. Let's go real quick to Archer Daniels and Heinz and make sure they both are going to face um, margin calls here. We don't want them to prematurely sell off their commodity holdings. So we're going to give Archer Daniels $35 billion. And we're going to give Heinz... Sixty-five billion. Now we don't have to worry about them selling off their holdings of this stuff prematurely. Everybody got corn, right? Okay. And wheat's still hovering just over $5. All right, our GDP growth is up too. Another four tenths of a percentage point. All right, let's go to uh, Columbia Healthcare. And my notes here are to passively invest in some of these other companies. Uh, we can get 5% of this one. He's got the best return and a nice dividend. Okay, THC is the next one. He's got a lot of cash and his income's positive. So let's buy 19% of him. And then Omni. And we'll stop there. Okay, now we have excess cash to the tune of six billion, so let's uh, disperse six billion. Okay, and he's got less than 40%, so we don't have to siphon off any uh, assets. All right, let's go to Diageo. His income is up. See, our sale price on corn is seven dollars and uh, crude still seems to be falling so we'll wait on that one all right so Dio we need to increase the dividend here he's making money finally and we're just going to change it to 11 cents which is what he's bringing in per quarter we have a little bit of excess cash but we've already invested in three uh, stocks here so we've got this one this one and this one we don't have Budweiser uh, 
this one's priced too high. So I think that's all we want to do. Let's uh, see what our dividend is. We're bringing in 11 and we're paying out 11. So that's fine. Of course, we do have excess cash. So we could increase it and make it a full 2%. That would be 14 cents. All right, Comp de Rio. He actually has too much of a market share. We need to reduce it. All right, so right now he's got 44.2%. Everybody's downsizing at the maximum rate. So our market share is not dropping. So we're gonna pick up uh, Nikon Steel here and uh, give him 10% of our assets. All right, so now we've got even more money that we can put in here. Let's see if there's anybody we want to passively invest in. We've got under 40%. So we've got 19% of this one. Oh, everybody is out. Double digit negative. Let's hold off. So do we want to do a... Um, see, we only need 9 billion, so we could disperse four. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, crew jumped quite a bit all at once. Do I want to buy it now? I think we'll hold off. I think we'll hold off. I mean, it's March 31st. So let's wait till the next quarter. All right, so uh, let's see, who's next? Malincrot. All right, here we've got 44%, so we're gonna siphon off assets. We're gonna lower his R&D to 6%. And we also need to lower the growth because we're growing at 6% here, which matches the demand, but we want these returns to go up. So we're going to lower the uh, growth to 1%, the R&D to 6%, and then we're going to siphon off 10% of the assets. And uh, this one right here is probably the one we're going to buy. All right. All right, so he's taken care of. Next, we've got Sciocorp. His income is flat, but his return is uh, positive. And uh, everybody else here is uh, finally reaching positive uh, returns. So we need to invest some more money here. We've got plenty to do it with. And the only one we have stock of right now is HGSI right here. So we're gonna buy 19% of Organogenesis to begin with, if there's any available that is. And there is, so we can get 19%. All right, Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi, his earnings are almost double. Which is kind of weird because the uh, prime rate hasn't changed really. Wow, spot wheat's dropping. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, who else can we invest in here? All right, so we have these two. Chiron is next. 
He's still negative and has a BBB. I don't know if I want anything that's BBB or worse. So I guess we'll stop there and just disperse any excess cash we have. All right, so we need, um, well, nine billion. There's really nothing to be dispersed. So let's just hang on to it. So next up is Time Warner. Here, his income is down a little bit. Hong Kong earnings are up. So Time Warner, this industry is reaching positive as well. Do we have any? Okay, so we've got New York Times, which is this one. So let's get uh, Pub. And I'd like to get Reuters, but he's still negative and he's overpriced. So let's pick up 10% or 19% of Pub. And uh, maybe DJ as well, Dow Jones. We still have seven trillion to work with. I just don't want to pay that extra 50% for him. He's too negative, too negative. And all the rest of these are too negative. So let's disperse this extra seven billion. All right, I know it's a little bit higher than our regular amount, but let's get uh, neck peripherals to buy silver. And Bank of Rakem is about to declare in one day. Curious to see if he made money or lost money on his um, swaps. Okay, we are down to Heinz. We already took care of the commodities and he's tied up all of his money into um, commodities. So he really doesn't have money to passively invest until we sell those off. And uh, the only one really that we want is uh, Tyson and he's kind of overpriced. I mean, we'd like to get, we already have Best, and we'd like to get uh, Kellogg's here, but I don't want to do it uh, until we sell off either our corn or our, our wheat. So, once we sell these off, we're looking, wheat, we're gonna sell it at six, and corn, we're trying to sell it at seven, because it's been going up to seven every couple of months. Hopefully it doesn't start trending downward. All right, so we'll hold off on him. So let's go to waste management. Income is headed down here. And uh, even though we have 40%, we're not going to downsize because we have somebody bigger than us here. And we own 19% of him. So let's passively invest. He's overpriced. Let's passively invest in Donaldson here. More bad news. All right, so that's the end of our excess cash, so we'll stop there. Corn has dropped again. Is there anybody else we can get to buy corn? Let's see, who has a lot of cash? So, Superior and um, PBR could probably do it because it's only like 200 million or billion. And since they're not invested in oil right now, let's have them buy corn.
index is on the way up. All right, where do we leave off? Okay, so JSR. And the reason why there's no note on him was what, was because when I looked at him, there wasn't really anything to be done. All right, so his income is positive. Right, he's making a profit and he's very capable. And uh, he's got a little bit of excess cash, not a lot. He's only got two billion, maybe three in excess cash. And this whole industry is negative, so I don't really want to do any passive investment. At the same time, because it's so negative, I don't really want to issue a dividend yet. You know, um, so we're not really going to do anything with him. And plus, he doesn't have an excess market share. So we're just going to skip him. All right, A and P, his income is down. He's got excess cash. And he already owns 19% of Alpha Beta, right? This one. So we can invest in Trader Joe's. Uh, this one's not negative enough to worry about, so we can do him too. I think that's Whole Foods. All right, so uh, let's invest in those two and then let's lower the R&D. Very capable, and uh, now we are only, what, $3 billion above what we should have. So let's see. Uh, he's negative. Here's one that's positive. Of course, he's awful small. So got it, got it, got it. So I guess this would be the next one, but his credit rating's low, and he's still negative. So let's not do him. And the rest of these are all pretty small. So I guess we're done here. Uh, we're bringing in 34 cents a quarter and we're paying out 64. So let's just hang on to this excess cash because we're probably going to need it if the um, returns don't go up. 1384. Is there anybody that needs silver that doesn't have it? Yes, Lawnman. Let's have him buy silver. Price jumped to 14, but we're going to get it anyway. Probably showing a pretty penny on the gold. 40 billion so far. Of course, he bought it at the worst price. Wonder what mine says. 132 billion. But we're going to wait, see if it goes up some more. Okay. Uh, where do we leave off? A and P. So McDonald's is next. Here, income is down. We've got excess cash. And I don't know what, if anything, we are invested in. Returns are still pretty negative, but they're on the way up. Well, we seem to have passed Rakem Bank's declaration. Let's go back and look at it. Okay, Cracker Barrel is all he has. Let's go look at the bank's earnings report. All right, so he made half a trillion. 48 cents a share, which is excellent. And he he made money on his swaps? That was, un, I didn't expect that. So he made 51 billion on his swaps. Uh, that's pretty good. Wow. <laughs> uh, investing in gold and silver really brings down your liabilities, boy. All right, let's sell two trillion worth of mortgages, get them back up above six trillion. All right, Aetna's up. Probably everybody's up as far as the insurance companies go. Um, 
And the index is up too, which is good. Okay, so McDonald's. Yep, Tokyo's up. All right, so he only needs eight billion. So we've got 13 billion in excess cash. And everybody's negative. And uh, Olive Garden here is the only one with an AA credit rating. Cracker Barrel we have, and KFC is double digit negative. So I don't really want to pay this much when he has a return this low, but uh, it's probably going to keep going up as this return rises. So it's pretty much now or never. So let's buy 19% of him now and then disperse any excess we have. All right, so we have 9 billion excess. All right, progressive is way up. Wirehauser paper was in the same situation as JSR, but we'll go take a look at him anyway. Okay, still losing money, but it's getting better. ING is up a little bit. Um, okay, US filter is being put on sale, but we don't care. We don't want to take control of him. We've already got 19%. So Weyerhaeuser Paper is going to lose 90 cents a share. And uh, he's reasonably competent in spending a whole bunch on R&D in order to reform the management. We've got $3 billion in excess cash, and we have 19% of UPM chymine. Right? But everybody is double-digit negative. Um... You know, this is just in bad, bad shape. So the only thing to do really would be to lower the R&D, but I don't want to do that um, until we have a very capable status. So there's really nothing to do until this turns around. And we need one of two things to happen, either this demand to go up or for some people to go bankrupt. Right? But until then, there's nothing to do really. And because, because uh, his return on assets is negative, we're going to let him have that cash. It'll help offset some of his losses. Okay, let's go look at uh, Komatsu. Here, he's still positive, but the income is dropping. Okay, he's, and he's got too big a market share, too. But he is very capable, which is nice. Okay, but see how negative everybody is? All right, so we need to lower our dividend, and um, we need to siphon off some assets, and I guess we're going to use uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries here. All right, he's super small, only $180 billion. Okay, let's give him 10% of our assets. We'll spin off 81% and have our parent sell the rest. All right, so we've got, uh, let's see, this minus six would be about 9 billion in excess um, cash. All right, so here's us. And we don't really want to invest in anybody else, so let's just disperse this excess cash. And we need to lower his dividend too. So let's lower his dividend to, to six cents. And uh, we'll just, we'll leave him with a surplus and then some. So let's leave him with uh, 9 billion and disperse 5. All right, and we missed Rakem Insurance dec Declaration, so let's go take a look at that. Must have been good because our index is up. All right, so he's he made 37 cents a share, over a trillion dollars for the quarter. 
nearly four trillion total for the quarter. His uh, cash on hand is kind of low. Of course, we did give a trillion dollars to Aetna. Uh, let's see what his projection is for next quarter. 46 cents. Right? So he went from 37. He's going up another 11, I guess another 9 cents. Which ain't bad. Ain't bad at all. Our stocks are now worth 101 trillion. So if we ever catch up, if our stock price ever catches up to his net worth, which is now up to $32 a share, our our net worth will grow. Because, I mean, we own 98% of this guy, you know. Just his stock price just is way sluggish. All right, uh, we finished Komatsu. So next we need to go over to Archer Daniels. Here his income is going up, but only because of what he's making on wheat and corn. Because they count toward operational income. So, if we're going to invest in anything, of course we don't even have enough money to pay our taxes. We'll have to borrow. And nobody's positive anyway, so let me take that off of him. We don't need to uh, passively invest just yet. Alright, let's go to... Uh, we already took care of him, so let's go to um, Japan Tobacco. Here, income is down, but it's still positive. We're very capable. We don't have an excessive market share, but we do have excess cash. All right, so Philip Morris is positive, but he's trading kind of high. And uh, whatever this one. Oh, this is Paul Mall. This is Philip Morris. It is a 10% dividend. I guess we could take it. I don't like that it's double digit negative. So let's get him and let's get him too. I know he's got a B credit rating, but let's hope that nobody goes broke. Now, do we want to take him too? He's trading kind of high, but his income is way up. Uh, let's see, how much is it going to be? It's going to be four billion. Let's hold off. It's just a little too high. None of our commodities is cooperating, but our index is on the way up. Next up is Toyota Europe, and his income is negative, but improving. And everybody's negative. Of course, we don't have a prohibitive market share. Where did we get this guy? Who owns Jaguar? Oh, this bankruptcy? Let's get rid of him. Okay, let's get back over to uh, Tokyo Europe. Or Tokyo Europe. Toyota Europe. And uh, let's take a look. So he's got six billion, which is exactly what he should have. He's invested in Volvo. And uh, everybody's double digit negative, so we're not gonna invest any now. So he is still in a holding pattern, still trying to get that industry under control. Let's go to the body shop. 
He's still losing money. He's got two billion in excess cash. He's invested in good guys and uh, music land, which looks terrible. So what do my notes say? Siphon off assets? We don't really need to do that because we have somebody bigger than us above us. Of course, we could get STP here and give him 10% of our assets and hold on to 19% of him. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. And we also need to look and see if we need to raise our R&D. PBR made a bunch of money. Yeah, he's mostly cash. We can uh, we can do all right with him. We'll have to buy this three percent away from retail shares, though. So, we don't have any excess cash. We've still got uh, stock of ST of uh, staples, and our market share is down to thirty-eight point four. So we're good. All right, we're starting to run short on time. I don't think I'm going to try to finish all of these today. Normally, we would go over to um, the. Uh, holding companies and sell off or ex do extraordinary dividends for all their excess cash. But silver is ready to sell, so maybe we'll do that now. Uh, let's start with Lon Min and uh, Phelps Dodge. We'll sell off their silver. And um, depending on how much time we have left, we'll do our extraordinary dividends. All right, so I'll fast forward and be right back. I think we're going to go ahead and hold off since um, we don't have to worry about the bank or the insurance companies doing any declarations until July. And that's still two months away or at least a month and a half. So we'll do all that stuff next time. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to split these uh, two. Tokyo is ready to be split. Aetna is ready to be split. And we'll just check and see if anyone else is ready to be split. And we'll split them and then... Uh, We'll call it an episode. Okay, and all I'm looking for is anybody above 60. So Lonman's ready to split. Mitsui's ready to split. Heinz is almost ready to split. All right, and Superior and uh, MBK are almost ready to split, but Burlington is ready to split. All right, I think that's it. We didn't do as much on commodities, but it is nice to see that our index is up. Um, we'll come back and basically start at the top and work our way down again in the next episode. Hopefully our GDP growth will climb a little bit faster. It's kind of slow and all of our commodities are kind of sluggish right now. But uh, we're not in control of any of that, so we just have to kind of wait and see. Our prime rate is up a bit, which is going to help out the short bond yield, so we should make some more money on our swaps. That may cause some havoc 
on uh, the stock market with bankruptcies coming up, or at the very least, helping Rakem Bank increase his business loan portfolio. It's up to one and a half trillion, but uh, needs to get up to about five trillion. And uh, it's just not possible with uh, the industry downsizing the way it is. We need some. Uh, we need. We need some. Uh, a bull market is what we need. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share. And until next time, this is Rakem saying, have a good one.